Okay. All right, everybody. Welcome. Uh, we are Stefan and Martin from Schildwache Potsdam. And today we want to give you a very short presentation on three criteria that you need to employ to approach your opponent safely, to hit them while not getting hit. And also these criteria can help you to evaluate your interpretations on any text in essence. Okay, so let's first start about basics. If we want to hit our opponent, uh, we need to get in a position where Stefan has not enough time to either react in the first place to my action, and second, to do his own action that prevents me from hitting him, okay? So it's basically, two separate time frames. The first is the reaction time, and then there's the action. So, of course, if we stand like this, I'm too far away because his defensive action for a thrust would be really small. So my action of the offense is too long. Okay, so I want to get close enough. So this looks already really promising if I just want to hit him, all right? The problem, and now comes the second criterion, which is even more important, is that I'm now standing so close that I don't have enough reaction time and time to uh, do my own defensive action if he just decides to do this and cut me to my leg, okay? Because my defensive action would be to get out under here, and this is just so quick, it's almost happening in my reaction time only, okay? So to get into this position where I can hit him and he can't defend anymore, I need to proceed through positions where I always have so much control, or he's uh, doing a wide motion and stuff like this, that I am safe doing so. So I have enough reaction time, and the action of my defensive action is small enough, all right? That's the second criterion. And the third one, is, and it makes it even harder for you to approach your opponent, is that I also need enough reaction time, and the action of my sword needs to be small enough as well, that if Stefan, not only if he hits, tries to hit me, but also if he just tries to, yeah, gain, regain control and get into a better position, that I need to be able to react to that as well, okay? Because, well, while this seems like a fairly good position, right? If he just does this and my reaction time is too slow and I now need to take, or maybe even go a bit lower, and I now from here need to take a big motion, then he can counter and do this perfectly in tempo in the motion that I do, I'm doing. And so the position I was first getting in is not really available, okay? So, three Catrea, which you can evaluate your interpretations. So now, Let's have a look at one specific approach of the Bolognese Masters to get close to your opponent while maximizing your time to react to any action that the opponent can throw at you, be it either offensive or to regain the control, while keeping the control for yourself and then hitting them, all right? So let's first uh, start with a piece of footwork that they describe, uh, especially for the sh sharp sword, Spada Filo, where they employ a gathering step. Instead of just advancing with the front foot in either way like this, or stuff like this, but they actually move the body forward on a gathering step. What's the advantage of this? Well, you probably know if you're doing just a step, you basically have your body weight in front of your back foot, and in essence, I'm falling forward, or of course I can push myself forward, but I can only switch directions, especially to go back, when I place my front foot and then switch directions, okay? While with a gathering step, my weight is always behind my front foot, so at any point of time here, I could push myself back in the other direction, uh, create distance between us, and so give me time, all right? reaction time and time to do my own defensive action. So what they employ, like I said, it's the criteria are pretty agnostic, but they uh, deploy a fairly low guard, especially without the buckler, to keep the hand safe. And they try to get here to this 
position where they want. And if he doesn't react, I don't hesitate, of course, and I get my final position in. So here, I'm not in the distance where I could safely attack him. But if Stefan tries to decide, okay, now I'm binding here, then I have enough time to react and counter myself, okay? And they give you all these different kind of actions where you move either with a parry and a repost or even just a contra tempo, right? So if he tries this and lifts the blade, I can lift as well because I have a positional advantage, all right? And I have enough time to react, okay? But it's always hard to move against opponents that don't move and that just try to lure you in. So, like I said, what, what they do is you get into the edge of measure, you place your front foot, now you get close. If they don't react, you just get in, okay? And you don't hesitate. And this is something that we see already in 133. We always describe if you deploy your obsessio, right, your counter guard, and they don't react uh, appropriately, you don't hesitate and you just go in and hit them, all right? Because if you stay here for too long, well, now you're back again at square one, okay? Where it's really hard, especially to defend your legs, all right? Okay, um, basically, this is it. I just want to give you the other principles that Vijani gives us, and he talks about having the feet close together is better. Uh, he also talks about, well, uh, employing an advantage of guard, which just means I want to get into a position where my sword points at Stefan and his sword doesn't point to me, okay? Because that implies, yeah, he needs to take a tempo, a motion, from here to there to close the line once again, and that gives me time to react to do my own action. So actually, like we also see in Fabris and later Rapier Manuals as well, it's not necessary that you go for the bind. Because if you're already in the bind, the action for Stefan to regain the stuff here is much smaller as if I would be here where he needs to take a longer tempo, a longer motion, giving me time to react, okay? Also, he doesn't quite know if he's stronger or if my blade's really over it, right? So it might be interesting for you to try this, right? Don't follow something if the, uh, put the blade low. Yeah, don't try to do this, right? Because this is just a huge opening for the upper, for your upper torso. So instead, they would still be just having this everything low here, going here, and then move accordingly to your opponent, all right? Okay, so we have advantage of guard, we have the advantage of getting the feet closer together, and then they also describe, well, the final position in essence, and they say it's the advantage of stepping, is where, you're, uh, where you can reach your opponent with a small advancing step, or at the most, this depends on the positions and the movement of your opponent with a passing step as well. Everything else, if you need more steps, especially also for compound actions, where you do many actions and you're just trying to walk down your opponent, super unsafe. Really a big tempo, or lots of big tempi actually, so that might get you killed in the meantime if you <laughs> get a buck there. So if you just try to walk your opponent down and try to go up here, yeah. It's just too many steps and you'll walk into a counter in the meantime, all right? So basically our three criteria illustrated at the points of Vijani. Hope you enjoyed it and uh, feel free to discuss this with us. Thank you. Okay. Do you have questions? Yes, can you say uh, what was the name of the master? Who, uh, uh, Angelo Vijani. Yeah, uh, who wrote about these three specific advantages. And he was a Bolognese by birth, but he actually uh, taught in Rome. Uh, or did he? No, he didn't taught in Rome. Uh, he taught at the court of Charles V, the emperor of the Holy Roman Emp uh, Empire. Nearly yes. Rome. Hmm? Nearly. Nearly Rome, yes. <laughs> All right, cheers. 16th century, yeah. He, he wrote uh, 1550, and it's published after his death in 1575. One question, the gathering step. 
Mm -hmm. They're pretty vulnerable to pushing attacks. Is there anything that treaties? How do you react if the other one just goes in and tries to push you away? So, at the let's assume I have the advantage of guard, right? And I try to get closer to the opponent. Right. Okay. So I try to go over here. And now Stefan, while I'm, go I'm going up here, tries to just push me out of the way or tries to push the thrust in, basically. Well, then you have still, uh, in essence, you can adjust your footwork to either, if you need the time to go back and go around or, well, to just shorten the angle. Hmm. Especially with a, th with a thrust, I don't think, like, Pushing I think, through. I think, yeah, I think, um, I think the, the thrust is too easy to deflect. Yeah. Have I tried to try to attack with the guard into into Martin's guard and push him. Oh. Wait up! Put on a glove. <laughs> <laughs> so if I'm here, all right. Yeah, but uh, okay. Let's do this again. So you, you are now take advantage of being able to shift the body weight and just get out of it. Yeah, but I, I use the tempo that he gives me to, to move forward into this. Yes, because sure. you keep your options open by the gathering step, because you do not need to go forward. You can go sideward, backwards, anywhere. Yeah. Yeah, and basically, like uh, we see this approach in in Vijani, like I said, but we also see it in Manciolini with the sharp sword. We see it in Marazzo with the sharp sword, and we also see it in Dalagocchio, which is already 1572. He describes it with the uh, with a side sword and a rapier, and says it's way easier this way. You can, of course, do it with a single sword as well, but it's harder because it's diffi more difficult to protect the lines. Right. Cheers.